I have no idea, you guys. I'm just gonna start and <laughs> I'll rotate it later. All right, so for some reason I am doing this while I'm on the wall. <clears throat> This is my first live, so please be patient, as I know you guys are. I'm just going to play around and see what happens. I can't see who's on yet, so let me adjust my computer to see who's there. Can, you, can someone say hi if you're there so I can see when the chat comes up. Hmm. Maybe I can make this go sideways in here. I don't think I can. Still looking. Oh, hi, Sylvia. I can see you. Hello, how are you today? I apologize in advance if my kids come running and screaming. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're home, so I'm feeling especially brave trying this while they're home. <laughs> so if it's a total disaster, I will try it again tomorrow when they're at school. All right, I thought today I would work on some warm colors and see where that takes me. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still getting over this ridiculous cold or virus that we've had for the past, I don't know, six, seven weeks. It's really annoying. Right. Normally, some wax paper between my pages just so I can paint over the edges and not worry about painting on my older work so I'll do that here and let me know um, Sylvia or anybody else I have some background music playing I'm hoping it's not too loud but it is more for entertainment for myself if nothing else Everybody have a nice weekend. We'll try some gloss medium here. Hi, Cindy. Thanks for joining. Sylvia and Cindy, where are you guys watching from? I'm in the Chicago area in the US. Sylvia, it's nice to have you here. <laughs> yes, for good, for better or worse, it's my first time, so welcome. You'll be here for all of the potential chaos, because I'm pretty sure my kids are going to storm in at some point, <clears throat> potentially screaming. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's see here. Oh, good, thank you. Thanks, ladies. It's a little daunting going live because, you know, you really don't know if you're going to be sitting here by yourself, <laughs> talking to yourself or not. So I'm glad that you guys are, are here. And right now, perhaps more than any other time, I am just putting paint on here. I'm not thinking at all. I don't know if you guys use a color shaper. Where's my camera? So this is just like a silicone wedge on here. Oh, Ontario. I've never been to Canada and I really don't know why because I don't live all that far from the border. Probably six hours, maybe less. Um, and I've always wanted to go. I have some <clears throat> friends. Actually, I think they're in Ontario. No, they're in Ottawa. Sorry. That's <laughs> that shows you, you know, my typical American 
uh, geography that has failed me. Um, let's see here, what should I do next? I'm gonna do some pencil. Sylvia, are you in the U.S. or are you somewhere else? You know, as much as the, you know, social media sometimes can take over and be obnoxious, it is really nice that technology still brings us together because my chances of running into Sylvia or to Cindy on the street would be next to nothing. But it's nice that we can connect online. I've been in a celadon green phase. I feel like it is a nice, totally, well, almost totally unsaturated color that plays nicely with the red. Hi, Sue. Oh, it's out of focus. Thank you for letting me know. I was trying to focus things. Let me see here. Hold on a second. There's no way for me to choose a focal point here, which is really annoying. Hmm. Oh, Southern France, Sylvia. Welcome, welcome. I took French in high school and promptly forgot almost all of it. My French teacher was from Romania, but thought she was, you know, basically she decided she was Parisian and she hated me. I don't know why. Hi, Sue, Tinley Park. Oh, I've been to many concerts in Tinley Park. Many, many concerts. Just for the fact that it's live stream. Hopefully that's not wondering if it will zoom back in once the video is processed. I see that I'm, uh oh, I see that I'm watching this on the computer too, just so I can read your um, chat comments. And I see that I'm a little blurry, so that's not great. <clears throat> now I understand what you meant. Well, I'm gonna keep going and we'll just see what happens. Can you hear me at least? Oh, thank you, Cindy. I so appreciate you guys being here watching. And just watching videos in general. I started doing YouTube, honestly thinking that maybe this would, you know, help me get my Instagram views up and never expecting to really like doing YouTube videos. But now I hardly go to my Instagram, which I'm trying to work on as well, because I really should be doing both. Um, but the YouTube community has been unexpectedly wonderful. So thank you guys for being part of that. All right, Sue, I live in Highland Park, so I am north of you. I don't even know how many miles, but probably about 45 minutes or an hour solid. But I've definitely been to Timley Park for many concerts. Hi, Ida, from the Netherlands. Awesome, I've never been to the ne Netherlands. Um, I'm very tall, so every time I meet someone from the Netherlands, they always remind me or tell me that I'm just a regular, normal height, I'm 6'2", and I often dream of going to the Netherlands and finding clothes that I can wear in the stores. Because <laughs> right now I order everything online. So is the stereotype true? Are people really very tall in the Netherlands? Hmm. That's orange. Those crayons that I'm using are Neocolor crayons. And they have two versions. Or I use two versions of them. 
there's one and two. I'm using one, and version one means it's not water soluble. So the other ones turn into essentially like watercolors. It's, you can paint over them and they'll blend in with your paint colors. Um, these just act like regular crayons, so they won't smear and blend. Actually, I'll show you guys. So I'm going to add, add some more this color. So this is quinacridone gold, and it really warms things up. So we'll see how the purple and the orange didn't smear at all. Can you guys hear the background music at all, or is it just for me? <laughs> oh, I like that. Add a little bit more on this side, too. glazing like this and just putting a little bit of a transparent color over because it warms things up without becoming totally overpowering. Also let me know if you can hear my children. <laughs> They're outside in the hallway sometimes, so ask them to be quiet, but they're six, six, and five, so you know how that doesn't always work. Let's see here. I think I need something bold. Try to do this without a hair dryer so I don't blast your eardrums. and just add a little white that uses some of that gray. Thanks, Sylvia. I, I did try. I tried very hard. But when I went to college, I actually, um, my 
ancestors and my older relatives are from Scandinavia largely. So I end up taking Swedish um, and the University of Wisconsin at Madison has a Scandinavian studies program. So I took Swedish and learned a ton about my own heritage, which I had never known because my mom's parents unfortunately died very young um, and I never got to really meet them. So that part was neat. Nice. So in that sense, I'm kind of glad that the French thing didn't work out so that I didn't focus more on that in college and started something new. But I've been to Paris and I will say it still is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. So I, I um, haven't been to the south of France, but uh, France was beautiful from what I saw. Loving how this is looking, but it's only paint, so I will deal with that in a little bit <coughs> once it dries. Actually, I'll do some of this to give myself some, at least some interesting effects. One of the reasons I like working on more than one thing at a time is that when one thing isn't doing well, or you know, at least up to my standards at the time, I'm not liking the direction it's going, I can take a little break and work on the other side. And if nothing else, it gives me something to do while the other side's drying, so I don't overwork it. Oh, so yeah, oh my goodness, I know. You know, I went to, my husband and I, on our honeymoon eight years ago, we went to Stockholm, um, Gothenburg, or Göteborg, Sweden, and then we went to Copenhagen. My, my husband has some relatives, oh, I can't remember the name of the town, but just outside of Copenhagen, one of the suburbs, and we spent some time with them. And it was lovely. Uh, especially Stockholm, it was such a different, it, you know, it didn't have the big city vibe like Chicago <laughs> or London even. It was just very gorgeous with the water. Hey, Austin's art is here. Hi. It's nice to see you. Now, is your name Austin or are you in Austin or both? I don't remember. I remember talking to you before. I don't remember. Yeah, Sylvia, I totally get that. I totally get that. <clears throat> Big cities, you kind of need to be up for them if you don't like them all the time. I feel about Chicago sometimes too. I love the city when I'm looking forward to the city, but I live about a half hour, 45 minutes north of Chicago. And I used to work downtown, take the train, and it was wonderful. But now that I haven't been down there for a while, it's just such a hassle <laughs> to go down there and then you have to pay for parking and parking's like $35 for the day. And it's a whole big thing. I'm spoiled in the suburbs where I can always find parking and there's many other things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I had no I was doing a live stream today either, but I just decided to hop on and give it a shot. Since now I can finally do it from my cell phone, 
because I have a thousand people following me now, which is amazing. So thank you guys again for being a part of that. I was just trying to decide if I was going to try it out in private, you know, a kind of an unlisted thing or just go for it. And I, I have no time. I have no patience for just trying things. So for better or worse, I'm experimenting and testing this out live with you guys. Can you guys hear my squeaky floor? I never really noticed that I had a squeaky floor until I'm on live video. So getting a little more self-conscious about the noises in my place. All right, let's see here. I think I need some, let's do some liquid black and see what it does for me. Give me something to work with. <clears throat> Hi, Anne. Welcome. So I'm hoping to make live streaming a regular part of my videos now that I can do it from my phone. So you can actually see the art instead of just my face. Not that I don't want you to see my face, but <laughs> I don't think most of you guys are coming here just to watch me talk. It's more interesting for me to watch artists do their thing. Anyway, I will come up with some sort of schedule and do it so that you guys can actually know when it's happening rather than just a surprise. Although, surprises are fun, right? Oh yes, Austin, I totally encourage you to try abstract. It's fun because no one can tell you you're doing it wrong. <laughs> it's one of the things I like about it. No one can ever tell you you're doing it wrong. If you paint, you know, bananas and they don't look like bananas at all, well, even then, I feel like you could still say, ah, they're my bananas, don't worry about it. But with abstract, it's really nice because no one can tell you you're wrong. I guess I'm a rebel in that sense. I don't want anyone telling me what to do or what it should look like. So if it's all coming from my mind and my paintbrush, there's not a whole lot someone else can say about it. Sylvia, it's fun, isn't it? One of my favorite things, I tend to get a little, uh-oh, it's sticking here. I got a little too wet over there. I tend to, when I get nervous or unsure about my art, I tend to tighten up a lot, which is part of the reason I just put that black paint down. And abstract, for me, really gives me the freedom to just play and see what happens. And that is what I'm doing. Oh, mixed media, Austin, is more, so you can do different types of paint, but also just using crayons and pencils and collage. Speaking of collage, I'm gonna do some collage on here. I'm gonna grab some tissue paper. Let's see here. <clears throat> Hold on a second. So if I add some collage on here, instantly it will give me a big time focal point, especially since my background isn't super defined and this is so black. You don't have to cut out the outline, but I like to do that sometimes. The tissue paper when you affix it with matte medium or gloss medium, 
almost disappears. Sometimes you want it to disappear and sometimes you want it to stick out just a little bit. So let's see, it'll match that up with this. to do. I think I'm going to add some more white first so that it really pops. If I put that down on top of this um, area where there's more dark colors, it would still work, but it, it wouldn't pop as much as I want it to. So I'm just going to spread some white around. Sylvia, I totally agree. Like, when I finally learned to trust myself and that I could just make it up as I went along, it really is freeing. You know, when I was just writing this to someone, I think, in the comments of my last video, at one point, until very recently, I really thought that most artists knew what they were going to do the whole time they were making their art. So if someone ended up with you know, a painting that was mostly blue and had a little bit of red and a little bit of orange and it looked like a, you know, landscape and a sunset or something like that. I thought the entire time that every single um, part of their painting, that they had intentionally planned every single piece of it. So if there's just a teensy bit of orange in one area and then like a lime green pencil mark through it, in my mind, for whatever reason, I was like, oh wow, how did they plan for that mark to go right there? What I've since realized is that they probably didn't. They probably just ended up with that mark and worked around it. And I don't understand why, why in my mind, every artist did everything intentionally when I realize now that they were probably doing the same thing I'm doing and it ended up working really well and they liked where they were, so they stopped. You know, or they were intentional about some parts of it. But for the most part, I think a lot, the overwhelming majority, I would assume, of artists have a lot of surprises even to them in their own work. And the reason I say that isn't just because I think that, you know, that's how I work, but I think that's because it's the most fun way to do it. I used to do very pop arty, design focused art where I would take a picture and then overexpose it and kind of simplify it and bring it back. Um, and I really liked it because it turned out really cool, but it's still wet. Um, but I always knew what it was going to look like, right? Once I added the colors, I kind of knew where it was going, and then it was more like a paint by number. So I would I would never want to repeat that and make another copy of it because the second copy was so boring and there was nothing new. But, you know, I think that when you leave yourself some surprises, even if you're painting a bowl of grapes, if you don't know every single detail about it, it just becomes so much more fun for the artist to discover things along the way too. And I think at heart, most artists, right, we like the adventure, we like the experimentation, we like trying new things and seeing what happens. It's much like I'm not sure this is going to work here, but I'm going to give it a shot. All right, you can see how the tissue paper kind of almost disappears over here. Carefully, don't glue your sketchbook page to the paper back here. I have done that too. <laughs> Totally, Sylvia. It's 
so much fun. Just like, you know, the more I do too, like it really, if you're not confident in what you're doing, my advice to you would be do more of it. And it really becomes a game of quantity over quality. So if you're doing something that you're not sure you're in love with, but you like, you like how it feels when you do it, you think it has some, some promise, you're just not quite there yet, I would encourage you just to do more and more and more and more of it. Because that really is how I found my style. And I knew it would take time. I didn't know quite how much time. Not meaning it took me forever, but just meaning I didn't know if it would happen over you know, three months, three years. But even this year, making more art than before, since my kids were finally in some school, I've been able to, you know, my last art fair that I did, for the first time ever, I felt like every piece of art that I hung up on, my, on the walls of my tent felt like they were all made by the same artist. And in the past, I've had more groups of things here and there that looked like they could have been made by different artists. So I was very excited to see that I have come a long way, if nothing else, in my own evolution. Growth is one of those things that I feel like learning and growth are hard, but so good. But the during part is usually not the most fun. Now with art, I feel like learning new things and working it out is the fun part of art. Because probably if you feel like you've mastered something in art, first, congratulations. And <laughs> second, you're probably ready to try something new, right? Yes, Cindy, I totally agree. Yeah, once you can kind of feel what, you know, to be a little woo woo about it, what like the painting wants, right? It is very fun to just react to what you're seeing. I agree 100%. Let's see what I can do with these stripes. They want to go here. favorite thing about collage, I like it there, is that you get to try it on first before you commit. It's a lot of commitment putting your paint down. But collage is movable and so you glue it down. And even then you can always paint over it, but Let's see what else I can find. So tissue paper is nice if you want to have subtle additions because it's not so stark against white. But sometimes you want to have both. pieces and then I'll go back to painting.
when I'm picking my collage pieces, I'm picking pieces I like, but I'm also picking pieces that are different than other things that are in the painting. gives you something else to look at. I think I'm ready for that point. I need some pencil too. This is a pit pen. This is a fine tip. This is nice because it uh, it's a pretty permanent pen, but it leaves a nice fine Hmm. All right, what do you think? I think we need a little bit more red. You know what? I'm going to do sell it on first, and then I'll do a little more red. All right, let's see. How about up here? Well, see, I'm, <laughs> as I'm saying, this is a permanent marker. I didn't let it dry, so that left a little smudge there. see even here so this there had been some tissue paper collage here and when I put that celadon color on and wiped it off it does uh, the treatment of the paint is a little bit different because there's a layer of collage here and matte media or gloss medium and here there wasn't so it leaves a little bit more of a residue so even if you think okay well I'm adding this tissue paper and it's not really visible it'll still help have differences in your in your picture which I do like. my old Nintendo and <laughs> they think that Super Mario Brothers is like current video game technology so don't tell them Shh. anyway they're very excited when they get to new levels they also think I'm the best video game player in the entire world because I spent a good portion of the 90s <laughs> playing Nintendo so I'll never tell them that I'm not the best player in the world.
they'll figure that out soon enough on their own. Like I'm definitely missing a focal point over here. Let's see what I can do about that. Also, I'll just block some color out. I'm not sure, so I'm just going to go for it. Covering up a lot of details that I like. But this will help me quiet things down over here. And then I can add something exciting. Push it up, I get to save a couple more details. And add a crisp line, so I'm going to do that. So not everything's a torn edge over here. This is just some white butcher paper. It's actually the same as this paper underneath. So after I'm done, and this becomes dirty enough that I'll take it up and put a clean sheet down, I usually cut it up so I can use some of the designs that are underneath there. In my world, everything can be collage paper, for better or worse. That's what's going to do it. Okay. Okay. This will give me enough of a focal point. tricky to put on thin collage pieces that are in unique shapes. So you have to be a little bit more patient with that. Alright, this end off. And then once everything's really dry, I can go around and trim the edges for any collage pieces that I have not fixed themselves. All right, you guys, put this on some white paper so you can actually see it against the busyness of my desk. This is what I'm sticking with right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This was actually pretty fun. And I will see you uh, a different time, hopefully. I'll let you know when the next time I go live is, or I might just surprise you again, who knows. But thank you so much, guys, for watching. And feel free to comment in the comments on what you like best, what you learned, if anything. And if you have any questions. All right, thank you so